Okay, I'll start that over. Good evening, we're learning Maseches Psachim Daf Lamed Zion. We're starting about eight, nine lines from the bottom of Lamed Vav Amid Beis, going through sugya after sugya, which discusses what types of bread are eligible or ineligible to actually help us fulfill the mitzvah do raisa. And the Gemara is going to continue uh, with the Pasuk that speaks about Lechem Oni. This will be the second time it was referenced. Last time it was referenced to teach us that uh, there are, uh, well, according to one sheet, at least, that we are um, not allowed to use um, flour that's mixed with shem and yain and dvash uh, because of the pasuk of lechem oni. And here's another one. Again, eight, nine, ten lines from the bottom, give or take, lamed vav, lamed beis, two lines before the wide lines. Tana Rabbanon, the b'risa teaches us lechem oni. What does the pasuk mean when it says lechem oni? Prat, to exclude lechalot vela ashisha. Lechalot is to boil. Uh, we do this with bagels. A fascinating idea. If you boil a bagel, does that make it nachametz? No, but it makes it not eligible for matzah. It's, a, it's an exclusion in the Pasuk. And also, Vala Ashisha, Rashi here writes, Vala Ashisha is gluska gedola. It's a larger piece of bread. Um, they are not considered to be oni. They're not considered to be oni. Right? So that's an exclusion. Very good. Says Gemara, Yochol, lo yetze adam chovaso ela bepas hadra'a. Maybe we should say, listen, you're looking for lechem oni. Let's find the worst kind of flour possible. Let's find the flour that's ground poorly. It looks terrible. It tastes terrible. That's real lechem oni. Do we have to only go that far and say that there's only one type of flour that's allowed? Tamalomar, no. Mitzvah, matzos, matzos, riba. Many types of matzah are included. Ve'afilu, ke matzos shel shlomo. Even like the matzah of shlomo, what was the matzah of shlomo? Rashi, two lines from the bottom. Rashi shel shlomo, shahaya me'unag. It was very enjoyable. Klomar, soles nikia. It was very uh, beautifully uh, ground up type of flour and it was clean. It was very, it tasted better. It looked better. So we do include things. So then, then ask the question of the Gemara. Then I don't understand. If lechemoni is not coming to tell me about the quality of the flour, then what is it coming to teach me about? So it says, okay, it's talking about prat lechalot velashisha, like we started. To, to say that it comes to exclude food that is boiled. If you have bread that is boiled, it cannot be matzah. And if it's lashisha, very, very large pieces, that's also considered unacceptable. Good. Um, how do we know that ashisha is anything so chashu? Well, my mashma that the language of ashisha, the high ashisha, lishna, the chashibu. So how do we know that that's the case? Because the Pasuk says in Sefer Shmuel, by chalik lechol ha'am lechol ha'mon Yisrael, limei ish ve'adisha le'ish chalas lechem achas ve'ashpar echad ashisha achas. We see in that Pasuk that there's a reference to Ashisha and they were talking about a meal. Now there's a machlokas about what these words mean. Three lines from the bottom, Bamar of Khanan Bar Abba. Ashbar, it's a play on words. Follow along. Echad Mishisha Bipar. Ashbar, Echad Mishisha Bipar. One sixth of a cow. That is a meal. One sixth of a cow is a lot of basar. And then the next play on words is Ashisha. Echad Mishisha Be'efa. Again, a play on words. Echad Mishisha Be'efa. One sixth of an efa of bread, a very, very large amount of bread. And that's how we know, says the Brisa, with the explanation of the Amorim, uh, in the name of Rav Chanan Bar Abba, that an Ashisha is, is talking about bread. But not everybody agrees to that. A pliga de Shmuel, Damar Shmuel, Ashisha Garba de Chamra. That's talking about a, a shear of wine. Bottom Rashi, Garba de Chamra, Efa Shal Yain. So Eifa Shal Yain, it says that it's talking about a shear of wine. Uh, there's a correction on the side. It's not Eifa Shal Yain, it's a Pitaim Shal Yain. Eifa is usually a shear that's used for bread. So the, 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 the Mari Makomos on the side do change that word. Nevertheless, Shmuel holds that the language of Ashisha is speaking about something else because Ve'ohavai Ashishe Anavim, speaking about grapes with the word Ashashim in the same Pasuk. So different understandings of what the word Ashisha means. Fine. Tan Rabbanan, bottom line, Lamed Vavam Ebe, Tan Rabbanan, Ein Ofen Pas Ava, as you can see here, there's a girsa change between Biyom Tov and Bepesach, Machlokas, as to what this means. In about 12 lines or so, we'll understand maybe more. We'll understand why we were misupak about what the language was. But either way, the Gemara says, and we'll just translate literally right now, even though it's not how we will conclude, Ein ofen pas ava, we are not allowed to bake thick bread, thick uh, matzah, Bepesach, on Pesach, Dibre Beishamai, turning to the top of line, Lamedzai and Amadal, of Beishil and Matir. And Beishil does allow for the baking of thick um, matzah on Shabbos. So Kama Pasava, what is considered to be thick? Amar Rav Tefach. Provided that it's a Tefach, a Tefach, the post can say, is about four finger breadths, approximately the width of one's fingers. Uh, and he says that it's about that much. Where do we get the shear from for bread that it has to be, a, that it can be a Tefach? Shekin Matzina, well, Lechem Apanim Tefach, because the Lechem Apanim were a Tefach. And those were also made, they were also, some of them were chametz. I mean, some of them were matzah, so that was perfect. They're all, they all matzah, actually. Says the Gemara, hold on one second. You can't learn anything from the Lechem Apanim to the regular people in the world. 
And the Gemara is going to throw a whole bunch of issues at, right, right here at this answer of Beis Hillel. Number one, Maskif Lar of Yosef, Im Amru Bizrizin, Yomru Bishainu's reason. It, it, they're Kohanim. The Kohanim we're dealing with the Lechem upon him, there's reason. You're going to say that by them, they're a whole class unto themselves. But what about the rest of us? Yom Rubishainan's reason. You're going to say that we can make bread that's a tefach. What are we concerned about? That the flour is going to be machmet, so that it's going to, it's going to leaven. Now, if you're a Kohen, you're a Zaris, you're fine. But if you're a regular Jew, you're not such a Zaris, so therefore problem number one. Number two, Yom Amru B'Pasa Mila. When it comes to the bread, to the, to the dough and the mikdash, they're constantly kneading the dough. Rashi points out it prevents the leavening. Yom Rubipas She'ina Me'ila. You're going to say by bread that isn't kneaded all the time, like the ones that we have in our homes, the way that we make bread, we let it sit and rise the whole time. We're not kneading it the whole time. So that's problem number two with Basil. Problem number three, Yom Amru B'Etzim Yevashim. In the mikdash, they would use dried out wood to make sure that they would burn perfectly well. But Yomru, you're going to say by other people who aren't so makbed that they're going to be using Be'etzim Lachim, that that fire is not as hot. Because first, the fire has to burn off all the moisture, and then it becomes a very good flame. And again, Imamru B'tan Racham, the Chamer in the Be'etzim Mikdash was always going to be boiling, piping hot. Yomru B'tan Ritzoni, what about someone, a regular Joe, who doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to baking bread? His oven's going to be, his oven is going to be cold. And then it's going to take longer to bake, and then it's going to potentially leaven. And again, the last one, Imamru B'tan Rishel Mateches, in the mikdash, they were using um, an oven that was made out of metal. Conducts heat very, very well. Yomru b'tanur shelcheres. What about a tanur shelcheres? You can't. You cannot compare them. So, because of all of this, the Gemara rejects the understanding of the brisa. It's not really the shita of uh, Basila. It's trying to understand its rafuna. Rafuna initially understood that this brisa about pas ava was talking actually about thick bread. Says the Gemara, that's not what's going on here. What is the machlokes beishamai beishel about pas ava about thick bread? Says the Gemara as follows: Eight lines down, lamed zayin and manal. Amar Rav Yirmiyah Bar Abba sheili says Rebbe beyichud. Rav Yirmiyah Bar Abba said, "I asked my Rebbe beyichud." What does beyichud mean? Rashi has two opinions. It either means that he asked him privately or he asked him pointedly. I need beirur. I need clarity. Please tell me what the answer is. Umanu Rav, who was Rav Yirmiyah Bar Abba's Rebbe? That was Rav. But Ika de Amre, some say that it actually was Rav's Rebbe. It wasn't Rav who was the Rebbe, but it was Rav's Rebbe. Ika de Amre, Amar Rav Yirmei Bar Abba, Amar Rav. Rav was the one who was Shi'ili, says Rebbe, B'yichud. He asked his Rebbe, uh, again, B'yichud, either in private or he asked for a very clear answer. Manu, who was Rav's Rebbe? Of course, we know, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbi Huda Nasi, the Malakit, the author, the uh, the one who put together all the Mishnais. Anyways, the question was asked to this Rav, and the question was, my pas ava. When there's a machlokes beishamai beishel about pas ava, about thick bread, what were they talking about? So says the Gemara, what they were talking about was as follows, pas meruba, a large volume of bread, many, many pieces, not thick bread. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about many, many pieces of bread. Okay, okay, but then why in the Brisa does they call, do they call it pas ava? What, stop making it confusing. Just write pas meruba. So says the Gemara. Ba'amai karulei pas ava. Answers the Gemara. Last of the short lines, mishum denefisha belisha. Because they were they were kneading so much dough, they just considered it to be ava. They considered that part to be thick. Some say no. The asrei, the high tana in the locate in the locale where this tana lived, the pas meruba, pas ava karulei. Some say that the language was simply that that it was pas meruba. That's just how people talk. They said pas ava, but it really meant the same thing. My taima. What is the reason why pas meruba is problematic? Says the Gemara. What's the problem? Why does Beis Shammai, okay, we know Beis Hillel is matir, but what was Beis Shammai's concern? What were they arguing about Bechlal? My time, what's going on in this b'risa about whether or not it's permissible to make pas ava, to make thick bread on Pesach? Says the Gemara, if what you're saying is that it's, it's just too big of a tircha, there are certain things that we are not allowed to do on Yatif because it's a tircha. Right, we have the principle of Tircha de Tibura or Tircha Yisera. We have, uh, we, have, we have a whole bunch of concepts like that. So if that's what we're talking about here, who cares if it's Pesach or not? It could be any holiday that you're not allowed to make Pats and Ruba. Says Gemara, you're absolutely right. You know, Hanami, that's exactly correct. The Haitana, Biom Tov Shal Pesach, it happened to be that it was Pesach. But now look back at the bottom line of Lamed Vav and Beis. You could understand why it said Biom Tov there. Because the Havamino was that it was about Pesach. And the Gemara concludes, no, it's about any Yantiv. And you could put in the word Yantiv and it would, it would be accurate. So that's why the Gemara struggled a little bit. And now when we look back in our Gemara, three lines into the wide lines, one third of the way down, Lamed Zayin, but Aleph, says the Gemara, Tanya Nami Hachi, the Brice, the Rice, Be Shammai Omrim, Ein Of and Pas Ava, now the Bryce says explicitly what we're talking about. The Machlokes is simply about Tircha and whether or not one is allowed to make 
extra volume, very, very large volumes of challah, let's say challah bread on a regular yontif, or uh, you can't do the lisha, that might be, maybe, I don't know, the lisha of Eilich, it's a little challenging, uh, that's a good shot in the post game about, uh, about yontif, but the actual baking should be mutter, um, or do we say like Basil that it's mutter, to, to do all of the pas meruba, yes or no, machlokas, be paskin like Basil. the Shulchan Aruch quotes this shita and says that one is allowed to do pas meruba on Yom Tov as long as it fills up an oven. Next, Tanu Rabbanan, four lines into the wide lines, Pas Nakia. We spoke about this in the bottom of the previous summit by Shlomo. If it's Pas Nakia, the flour is very, very clean and very well ground up. Uve Hadra, and of course with lowly uh, type of grains. Uve Srikin and Mitsuyar and Bepesach. These were designs that were etched into the bread. So what's the halacha? Afopish Amrenos and Srikin and Mitsuyar and Bepesach. All of these, you're Yodse with them, but you really should not be doing any drawings into the, uh, you should not be doing any drawings into the, into the matzah. That's not allowed. I heard today that there was a Shiloh in the post game. There are some people who, uh, who took the matzahs and they put them under this laser machine and it would etch into the matzah um, designs and shapes, uh, you know, whatever, the mikdash, korbanos, whatever they would want to etch into there. So the post game say, does that get triggered by this Gemara? Because the Gemara says you're not allowed to have drawings on them. So the post game there say that was after the afia. It was after the baking was already done. But if it was during the baking process, the taka would be problematic. That's what our Gemara is talking about. What's the concern? Chametz. But once the baking process is done, you don't have anything to worry. You can design whatever you want. So they had this edible ink, and they would either spray it on, or they had a laser, and they would burn it into the matzah, and it would be totally fine. Okay. So you're just not erasing on You can't do that on no, Oh, eating it. eating it. Oh, no. That's a post game say even there that... The cutting of the cake, let's say, it says happy birthday. So that's problematic. But if you put it in your mouth and break the word with your mouth, that's not considered, that's not a problem. Here's the example. Yeah, not really. I mean, the very, less, I mean if, you had a, if you had a very small cupcake that said happy birthday, yeah. you, you'd be chayev to stick the whole thing in your mouth. Like, a, <laughs> you know, it's like a whole new deal. Okay, if so. You took, if you took a piece of the call, you have a matzah, I understand. That's a good shiloh too. Do we just turn the knife over? Or do we start to cut? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, like, when you do matzah, we break it, right? That's the Correct. Same thing. And if you break it to, you know, you can't use that Correct. matzah for, for the, sure. the whole thing. Correct. So if someone starts drawing, I mean, in that. Yeah, you'd have to do it without ruining it. It would have to be a. It would have to be a whole. It would have to be sh- right. shelling, as we call it. Has to be a shelling. You're gonna say, how do you draw? Are you put frosting on it. What do you do? It would be like. It would be like food coloring. Yeah, something along those lines. Whatever it is. It is it's, Whatever it is. It's not practical right now. It's not. But right. the, what they were doing with these matzahs were laser etching in them. Right. That's, that's a whole different circuit. Okay. That's uh, right. that would be permissible. Okay. Says the Gemara, one third of the way down. Wait a minute. Amar of Yehuda Dabar's. Yeah. Amar of Yehuda Dabar Zeh Shal Baitus Ben Zon and Lachachamim. Baitus said. Says this to the Chachamim. Hang on one second. Why can't I etch something into the bread on Pesach? What is the big deal? Says the Gemara. What we're concerned about is that the woman who might be baking the, the matzah, she'll, she'll get into the design and she'll be putting in all these wonderful designs and it's going to become, going to become chametz. So he says back to them, Amr Lehem, Baitu says back to the Chachamim, but that's not what I have, Amr Lehem. You, I can have a pre-form, you know, like it's like a cookie cutter mold and you just have to make an impression into the dough. It takes a second. What are you so worried about? So they said back to him, You, yeah, everything, everyone else in the world has it wrong, but you, because you're rich enough to have a template that you can press in, you have a mold that you can press into the matzah, everything else is fine? Come on, that's not right. That's why you want to do that. I'm a Rabbi Elazar, Bar Gamliel. Rabbi, El- Rabbi Elazar Bar Tzadok said of his father Tzadok, who went to, uh, to uh, Rabbi Gamliel, they view Lefanov, they brought before him Srikin and Mitzirim Pesach. They brought before him that which was designed. They had etched something into the matzah. Amarti, I said to my father, Abba, who was Tzadok, I thought you're not allowed to do that. Amarli, Bini, Lo shall call Adam Amru. The limitation wasn't on everybody. Ella shall Nachtomen Amru. A Nachtom is a baker. So the limitation is only on bakers, but by stam a person that's mutter, you could amr the exact opposite. Hacha ka'amar le. This is what Sadduk said back to his son. Lo shel nachtom in amr. They were not saying that the isser applied to bakers. Ella shel kol adam. Second one is more irrational because the baker is much more professional. He knows what he's talking about, and because of that, we are uh, we're less concerned about him. But uh, but by the average person, we should be concerned. Amar Rabbi Yosi, osin srikin 
kimin rikikin. You can do them on very thin pieces of bread. Ve'enos and srikin kimin guluskos. You should not do it on the larger pieces of bread. Rashi here, um, about 15 lines or so from the bottom, says, Dibramasal kimin rikikin. Ubulvachu dakin veklushin. They have to be very thin and almost to the point of fragile. Ve'en memahar in the hachmits, where it's not likely for them to become chametz. Ava lo mitzayrin asa oven kigluskos. You should not be designing the thicker ones, which are very, you know, thick kind of chunks of matzah, because they're so thick, it doesn't take long for them to become chametz. So that's how the Gemara concludes here. Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught us two thirds of the way down, hasofkinim, it's this type of uh, matzah that was very spongy looking, that's uh, made with some type of honey, the iskaritin, which was a thin type of, uh, of uh, cracker or wafer type. The chalas hamisras, we'll see what that, that is in the Gemara. The hamaduma, something that's a mixture of truma and chulin. All of those are p'tun min achala. So it says the Gemara, my chalas hamisras, what was that? Amarav Yoshua ben Levi, ze chalot shel ba'alei batim. It's this uh, boiled type of bread that people used to make. All of these things are putter from chala, which also means that they're ineligible to be matzah. Because if you're you, you're shach, if you can't, you're chayiv and chala for matzah, so that doesn't work. So all these things must not be. Here we're going to learn about a machlokas, Rav Shimon ben Lakish and Rav Yochanan, which will carry the day today. Here we go. We're about 15 lines from the bottom. Amar Reish Lakish, halalu ma'isa ilfasein. All of these were made in a frying pan. Anything that's made in a frying pan is not matzah. It, it has to be baked. You can't put it in a frying pan. Okay. Rav Yochanan Amar ma'isa ilfas chayiv. I disagree with you. Frying pans, you're still chayiv. That's still going to be chayiv and chala. That's not what we're talking about. All of these that are potter, the ones that are listed in this brisa, the one that starts out with starts out with hasofkinin. All of those were made in the sun, and because of that, they're potter, not a regular form of cooking. Macy, let's see whose opinion is right. Hasofkinin v'adovshin v'ha iskiritin. We see here explicitly in a different brisa. This brisa says that if they're made in an ilfis, that they are chayavin against the sheet of Rav Shimon Lakish. Rav Shimon Lakish says that if they're made in a frying pan, they're potter. This brisa seems to say the exact opposite. You have to do Rav Shimon ben Lakish. The Gemara says this rejects the sheet of Rav Shimon ben Lakish. Answers the Gemara. Amar ula, amar lach Rav Shimon ben Lakish. Nope, we're talking about a case here where you preheat the frying pan. And the, the preheated frying pan is hot enough that it actually functions like the wall of the oven does. Remember that when they made their um, challah back in the day, they would take the dough and they would slap it on the side of the oven and it would stay there. Well, what's the difference between that and putting it flat down in a frying pan? Nothing, <laughs> nothing, it's exactly the same. So what Ravashi is saying is as follows. When you're here, tiach, hidbik, when you first preheat, uh, preheat the pan so then, and then you stick the bread on, that's no different than baking, and that's considered afiyah. Aval hidvik, if you first stick it on, and then you start to heat up the pan, my then that's considered to not be chala, that's not similar to baking. Adatani Seifa, hold on one second. If all of this is a question of whether or not you hear tiach hidvik, whether or not you preheated the pan or not, then why is the Brisa talking about a sun becham apturin? Why do we care about the whole case of the sun? The way that Ravashi understood the price has nothing to do with the sun. It's just a question of whether or not the pan was preheated. Because if it was preheated, then the pan is no different than the tunnel, and then it's afi, and then it's chayv and chala, and then it can be matzah. It says the Gemara, liflug listening bidida. You should the brisa should have made the distinction the way that you just said it, Ravashi. What is it? Uh, not Ravashi, excuse me, Rashim ben Lakish. Liflug listening bidida. What should the Mishnah have said by Medvar Mamurim? When is it true that we say? When is it true that it's considered to be chayev? That's when you preheat the pan. Because when the bottom of the frying pan, when the frying pan is going to be very hot, just like the side of the oven, there's no difference. It's not enough at all. It's the same type of bishels. It's a fiyah. It's the same exact thing. So therefore, Rav, Ash, Rav Shimon ben Lakish would agree. Aval, so why doesn't the Mishnah say that? It has nothing to do with the chama. It has nothing to do with the sun at all. So according to Rav Shimon Lakish, what is pshat in the b'risa? Answers the Gemara. You're absolutely right. Great question. The b'risa that we just read that posed the question against Rav Shimon ben Lakish is missing information. Vahakitani, six lines from the bottom. Lama Zayin Amadalaf says the Gemara. What was missing from the b'risa? What really is the case? When do we say that in a frying pan is going to be similar to an oven, in which case it would be chayv and chala. That's true when the, when the frying pan was preheated and then you stuck the chala there. Fine, that I understand. What happens if you first put the, put the dough there and then, and only then you begin to heat it up, then says the Gemara, and here's the weave in for the, for the chama part. This is the weave. Now we include, oh, that's what it meant. That it was like the chama and that it's putter. So the, the chama line, why did it say chama pacha? That's similar to hidbikulu b'sofir tiach, where first you put the dough down and then you heated it up. All right, let's try another question. 
So Rav Shimon ben Lakish gets out of the first question. Tashma, let's see what the next question is. Yotzin, one can be Yotzin in the midst of matzah. Yotzin be matzah hina. We'll see what hina means in a minute. Uve matzah sui be ilfis. Yotzin be matzah sui be ilfis. You're able to be Yotzin with matzah that's in a frying pan. Who's that a kashan? Rav Shimon ben Lakish. Again, you said that an ilfis is putter. That's what the whole Bryce was talking about. And we just went through this whole arichus ba medvarim amurim this and that. The answer is the Gemara. You're right. And that's going to be the same exact answer I'm going to give here too. The Bryce is there where it says that it's matzah, so you be and then you can be yotze the mitzvah of matzah. What's that talking about? What is that talking about? Hochanami, shirtiachul, so we're talking about a pan that was preheated. And because of that, when the, uh, when the dough actually hits the pan, it's no different than going inside the tanur, inside of an oven, it's considered a fia, and therefore it's chayv and chala, and you can, if you make matzah, then you can be yotze with matzah. My matzahina, when this uh, bryce on the four lines from the bottom, when it spoke about matzahina, what is that? Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Shmuel, kol she porsa, ve'ein chutin nimshachen heimena. You ever go to someone's house and the chala is a little undercooked in the middle, and when they cut them, it's like stringy in the middle? That's mamish what this is talking about. Take a look at... Uh, Rashi, Rashi, two lines from the bottom. My matzahina, klomar kamate afe biye yotzebo. How much does it have to be cooked in order to be considered enough? So the Gemara was giving this answer. My matzahina, what does it mean to be cooked enough? And it says ve'ein chutin imshachen himena. When the dough is not stringy anymore, that's the minimum amount in order to be chayv and chala. Otherwise, it's not yet going to be uh, yotze for uh, for for this halacha at all. You would not be able to be yotze with matzah. It has to be matzah hina, where, again, we're talking about matzah of the old days, not matzah of today. Our matzahs are crispy. But when the thicker matzahs that Sephardim have, good shayla, if you eat it at, at, at the house of the Sephardim, we spoke about this briefly, you have to ask your shayla, make sure the hachsherim are good. Ladina, it's not uh, chametz. Ladina, it has to be fine. You have to make sure that it's, it's made properly like any other chametz. But in this case, what we're saying is that in order for, some, for one to be chayv in matzah, it can't be doughy in the middle. Oh, they didn't sell them. Here it's not an issue, right? Yeah. Well, guess in Eretz Yisrael, you really have a problem because you have people who are like neighbors who are Ashkenazim and Sephardim. Yeah, that's the real issue. Omar Rava, Rava adds in what, what seems to be very obvious, Vechein and similarly, Lach Toda. The same halach applies by Lach Toda that they only reach the level of Lach Toda when the dough on the inside is fully cooked such that it's not stringy had you pulled it apart. Pshita says the Gemara. That's pretty obvious. Bottom line, Lama Zayin, Amad Aleph, Hacha, Lechem, Ktiv, Hacha, Lechem, Ktiv. They both have, they both have the din of Lechem, the case of Matzah and the case of Lechem Toda. So of course, we should have the same exact rules that it, that it would have to be that the bread is not uh, so raw that the dough is stringy in the middle. Says the Gemara, Mao de Tema, we might have made an error. We might have assumed whole uksiv because it is written by the world of Toda, but he creed me menu, turning to the top of Lama Zainu base. But he creed me menu, echad me kol korban. You have to bring one, uh, Rashi here explains this, one from each of the four types of the Lach me Toda. There were 40, and there were uh, four different types, 10 each. You'd have to bring one from each one. Echad, you have to bring one. Shalo you told paros, you should not bring a broken one. The hacha keman de pri sadamia. But when it is uh, just baked enough that it's not stringy anymore. Maybe have a mina. We would have thought we have to wait till it's fully, fully, fully baked and ready to take out of the oven. This moment in time happens most of the way through cooking, but you wouldn't take it out of the oven yet. You want it to bake more. Maybe by lechem toda, we have a further standard, fully, fully, fully cooked and not just enough that it's not doughy anymore. Says the Gemara Kamash Malanda, that's not true. We do allow for the minimum standard that as long as the dough on the inside is totally cooked through and it's not stringy anymore, then it's considered to be lach me toda. Anyways, let's ask another question. Mesve, the Brisa asks, Hameisa, we don't know what that is yet. We'll see shortly. Beis Shammai Potra and Beis Shalom When it comes to Meisa, it's some type of water flour mixture. Uh, Beis Shammai says that you're, you're, that you're Potter uh, from Mechala. And Beis Shalom says you're Chayim. Hachalita, what does that mean? We'll see. Beis Shammai Mechayven. U Beis Shalom Potra. Okay, Ezu, this is all part of the Brisa. Ezehu Hameisa, Beisu Achalita. What are these two different types of mixtures of flour and water? Hameisa... Kemach shal gabe muglishin. It's when you put flour inside uh, or onto boiling water. Muglishin, boiling water, very hot water. Rashi, fourth line, the Ramaskal muglishin, roschen, boiling water. Hachlita, what is the other type of uh, flour water mixture? Uh, that's muglishin shal gabe kemach. That's when you pour the water on top of the flour. Good. That's uh, the shita of Beishama, Beishelel, and the explanation of those two terms, Meisa and Chalita. Rabbi Shmuel ben Reb Yossi, Omer, Mishum Aviv, Zevazel, Liftor, or maybe he said, Ve'amri, Zevazel, V'chiyu, we don't know which, which way he holds, that both were Chayv and, and or both were Patzer, we don't know what he holds. V'chachamim Omer, Mechazev, Echazev, Asan, Ve'ilfis, Patzer, this is where we come back, frying pan, Patzer, Beton, Rechayv, this is a Kasha on Rav Yochanan. But let's first finish the Brisa, because the Gemara has a question. The Tanakama. 
when the Brisa was talking in the Tanakama with uh, Beishamai Beishelel, the case of Chalita and Meisa, Maishna HaMeisa, Umaishna HaChalita. What is the big difference between them? Am Rav Yehuda, Mar Shmuel, V'chen Am Rav Yehuda, Rav Yitema, Rav Yishuv, and Levi, Kemachlokes Bezu, Kach Machlokes Bezu, V'tavra, Mishashan Azu, Loshan Azu. This is fascinating, and two different ways to understand this. The basic way to understand this is V'tavra. This is broken. Really, the case of Meisa and the case of Chalita, they're halachically identical. They were presented in, in different circumstances, but halacha lamaisa, they're the same. Uh, the tavra and our Mishnah was broken. Namely, they were misha shanazu lo shanazu. That whoever taught the first case of, uh, of, of hameisa was not the one who taught the case of hachalita, but they're very, very similar cases. Katani mihas, however, what did we see in the sheet of the chachamim? Katani mihas, the chachamim or mechazed the chazed shasan be'ilfes pater, but taner chayev. The chachamim were of the opinion that if you use a frying pan, What's the din? They held that you're going to be potter. That's the sheet of Rav Shem ben Lakish. That should therefore be to you of the Rav Yochanan. That's a problem for Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan was of the opinion that a frying pan is still chayv and chala. If you take bread and you throw it into a frying pan, it should still be uh, chayv and chala. Yet here we see it's potter, kash and Rav Yochanan. Amr lach Rav Yochanan, don't worry, I have my own tana to fall back on. You've got the chachamim, Rav Shem ben Lakish, but I have my own shita. Tanayi. Titania, almost halfway down the Mazayan and the base. Titania, the Brisa writes, Yachal yehe mi'isa vechaluta chayav and bechala. Maybe we should say that the me'isa and the chaluta, either the flour into the hot water or the hot water onto the flour, maybe we could, should think that they're chayv and chala. Says the Gemara, Tamalom lechem. The Pasuk excludes this. What is this Pasuk talking about? This full Pasuk reads, So that Pasuk says the word lechem, and it excludes me'isa and chaluta, these mixtures of hot water and flour. For the Yehuda Omer, and seemingly quite similar to the Tanakama, ein lechem ela afui b'tanur. Seems very similar. What did the word lechem preclude according to the Tanakama? It precluded a mixture that you make outside of, a, of an oven. You're pouring hot water onto flour or you're putting flour into hot water. So then the sheets of Rabbi Huda seems to say the same thing. Asks the Gemara, Rabbi Huda Hainu Tanakama. Seems to be that they're exactly the same shita. What are you saying? That's not mata. That's not chai. You're not, I'm sorry. That's not chayim and chala. Until you bake it, it's a, it's a nothing. You poured hot water. So what? That doesn't make you chala. So what, how do we explain the difference between Rabbi Huda and the Tanakama? El Alav, halfway down, the Menzayin of Abbas says the Gemara as follows. El Alav, Maisa Ilfis Ikabe Naihu. So says the Gemara, the way we understand the Machlokas, machloka, Rabbi Huda and the Tanakama, is our case. Our Machlokas, Rabbi Shem ben Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan, as to whether or not a frying pan is considered to be um, enough to trigger the Chiyuv of Chala. Tanakama Savar, Maisa Ilfis Chayavin, he holds like Rabbi Yochanan would hold, although it's a... The, of course, he came first. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, from the Tanaim. So he would hold that it's my self is chayav and Rabbi Huda Savar my self is Pturin, and that's how their shidas are. Says Gemara Lo, I don't agree with your comparison, Rabbi Yochanan. The um, Kulei Alma my self is Pturin. Everyone agrees that my self is Pturin. Says the Gemara. We no, you can't get away from that. Everyone agrees my self is Pturin. That's a shidah of Shem ben Lakish, and you would be putter from Chala. The Hacha Kigon Shechazar Va'afo B'Tanur Komiflagim. The Machlokas is. What if you first fry it in a pan and then stick it in the oven? We know that we want the challah to be baked, that we want the matzah to be baked, but, but how, how does it have to be baked? Can it be baked second after it's boiled? Let's say that we made a bagel that, that didn't have time to be machmitz. You have some dough, no time for chametz. You stick it in boiling hot water. Within one minute, let's say, it's cooked all the way through. And then you stick it in the oven to bake. Are you chayv and challah? Did the boiling ruin it? So that's the Gemara's question here. That's the Gemara says here. What they're talking about is two thirds of the way down. It's where you go back after the boiling process and then you bake it. Here's the machlokes. Because you put it in the oven at some point, even though it's after the boiling the boiling level, even though even though you boiled it already, we don't care. That's still considered to be lechem. Therefore, lechem karinan be. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda savar ein lechem elo afu betanur meikara. You first have to bake it. If you do anything else to it first, it will not be considered lechem. Baking has to come first. They came in the mikar lavatan rafia because the first step that you did was not baking. Therefore, lav lechem done. End of the conversation. So uh, this is a problem for Yochanan because Rav Yochanan doesn't seem to have a sheet that to fall back on anymore because we reinterpreted the machlokas Rabbi in the Tanakama to say that it had nothing to do with the conversation at all because everyone agrees that if you cook the ilfus, if you cook in a frying pan, that it's not going to be considered. Uh, to be chala. Okay, problem for him. Amar Rava, Rava says, my time in Rabbi Yehuda. Why does Rabbi Yehuda say his shita that it, that it only can be in an oven first? Why, why does it only have to be in an oven? Why can't it be boiled first? Where did he get his shita from? It's, it's more mechudash to say what he's saying, that it's not chala. I baked it. I baked it in the end. I baked it. Says the Gemara, because the Pasuk says, 
This is from Metochacha. When bread is cooked in one oven, a strange diuk from the Pasuk, but a diuk nevertheless, that only when it's cooked in one oven. But if it's cooked in multiple different ways, that does not count it. It does not have a din of lechem. Last mini sugi for the night. Yosef Rabba, the Rav Yosef Achore de Rav Zera. Rabba was sitting, Rabba and Rav Yosef were sitting behind Rav Zera. Yosef Rav Zera came to Ula. And Rav Zera was sitting right in front of Ula. So the layout of the room was Ula, followed by Rav Zera. And then in the third row was uh, Rabba and Rav Yosef, sitting in a pecking order of sorts. Okay? It's a privilege to sit next to the Rebbe. Omar lay Rabba le Rav Zera. So the back row says to the middle row, can you do me a favor? Can you please ask Rebbe, ask Ula, if you put something inside, uh, if you stick it inside the oven, and you warm it from the outside, Mahu. So Amar Lehi Reb Zera turns around in the middle of Shir and says, sorry, buddy, I'm not asking that question to the Rebbe because it's embarrassing. Amar Lehi, my Emily, what do you mean to ask him? The Amina Lehi, if I do ask him that question, Amar Lehi, hai nihu my silfas. That's frying pan stuff, what you just said. The heat's not on the inside, the heat's on the outside. That's a basic frying pan. You don't need to ask the Rebbe that question. That's ABCs. Okay, Amar Lehi Reb Yosef, Reb Zera, fine. But the third row says to the second row, let me ask you a different question that you can please ask to Ula. He says, Ba mine, four lines from the bottom. Mi Ula, hidbik mi bifnim ba'avuka konegdo mahu. What would be the din if you uh, put it inside, uh, if you put it inside a kli and there's a torch that is connected that's opposite it and warming it. Amar Lehi, my Emile, I can't ask him that question yet. You want me to ask him that question? Di Amina Lehi, what's he going to say to me? Amar Lehi, rovani mosin king. That's how people make food. That's what you do. You just take a fire and you put it near it. So is it a frying pan? Is it not? That's a good, that's fine. That's what we're discussing here. But that is what the uh, Gemara debates here for today. In Sikum Advarim, it seems to be, if we were paskening from the Gemara, it seems to be we paskening like Rav ben Lakish, because uh, Rav Yochanan doesn't seem to have a support for his shita. And therefore, it seems that if uh, bread was placed into a frying pan, it would lose the din of chala and lechora lose its status as matzah. We'll stop here and pick up Mir Sashem tomorrow night with Rafa Ches, wishing you all a beautiful night.